Okay, hi everyone. So my name is uh, Vincent Massol, and I'm a committer on the open source XWiki project. And today, I wanted to show you something that you may not have seen uh, in uh, some wikis, and it's the ability to create application within a wiki. So I'm going to show you um, on a demo with XWiki, which is a gen next generation wiki, the ability to actually create applications. So in most wikis you've used so far, so you used to enter freeform content, and that's nice, and that's the main point of the wiki, is this ability to very quickly enter information. However, there is also a need to be able to enter structured data. And why? Because you may want to actually manipulate those data. In free form, you're not able to do that. So it's interesting for Wiki to be able to have both the mix of free form and structure. And with this ability to structure data, we can create applications. So I'm going to dive directly into uh, uh, a demo. And we're going to demo a very simple application for handling a book collection. Uh, not only uh, the ability to enter to have your book collection uh, inside your wiki, but also the ability for people to borrow some books from your collection and to track that into your wiki. So let's go to uh, dev board. Uh, dev board. So here you see uh, XWiki. If you download it, uh, this is what you will get. Uh, this is the home page. Uh, with some text, with a dashboard, with an activity stream, and so on. So what I want to show you is, is here, is over here. So you can see that there are already some applications installed, like a, a blog, a dashboard, and so on. And, and there is the ability to have more applications here. So there, there are two, uh, two ways to get more applications to your wiki. One is to install existing applications, and we're going to see that a bit later. And the other one is to create your own. So let's do that. Let's create our own. So here we are within a, a wizard. It's called Application Within Minutes, which allows you to, uh, to create uh, some applications, some simple applications. Um, so first thing, create applications. So it's a three-step wizard. So you're going to name your application. Let's say I'm going to name it my book, my books. Uh, OK, next step. Then you need to define the structure of your application. So in this case, uh, we want to define what's a, what's a book and, and all the data for borrowing it. So we're going to have, let's say, some uh, short text. So you see we have different kind of uh, property types we can have. Short text, long text, number, boolean, list, and so on. And there are some more below. So short text, we're going to put the ISBN, for example, of the book. Then uh, we need also, uh, since we want people to be able to borrow the books, uh, we want a, a borrower, so we have a user picker. I'm going to name that borrower. Then we need to have a date where, where the book was, uh, was lent. So lent date, and then uh, we can have a, a return date. And we may want to have a, a list for handling uh, categories, like for example, uh, category, sorry, and we can configure that. We say, for example, we, want to, uh, can, we can have books on about romance, we can have books about technology, and so on. And I'll just put other as the third choice. And I'll remove the, uh, the default choices that were there by default. OK, good. Now for the date, okay, I can do some customization too. Uh, for example, I don't need the hours. I just want a date that. And I want to allow the date to be empty. If no one has borrowed, has lent a book, then I want to allow this to be empty. So let's do that for the return date too. And we're done. So basically here, we've defined the structure of our application. I can now go to the next step. So the last step is, is just a simple step where you're going to describe your application. Uh, so I'll just put my book collection. 
uh, and where you can specify the uh, when the application will, when when this wizard will generate the application, uh, it will generate a table with all the list of entries of books, and you can customize that. So in this table, we may want to see the ISBN, for example. We may want to see the borrower, the land date, and the return date, for example. And I can order the columns that will be displayed. And I can give an icon to my application. Um, so we're using the silk icon set here. So actually, there is one I know of already. It's called book, book open. And that's it. And click Finish. And here, what has happened? Several things have happened. Well, the first uh, thing is that in the application panel here, yeah, there is a new entry called My Books. And we've created uh, a, new, a new book application that resides there. Uh, if we go back to the wiki home, in the list of spaces, there's a new space called My Books. And this is where the wizard has created the, the pages that made the application. Uh, if I click on it, then I go to the, app, the, the, new, the new book application. So this is the, the home page of this new application. I can now add some entries. So for example, I put JUnit in action as a book. And you see, when I, when I, when I click it, uh, I get to a, a form that allows me to enter structured data. And these are the structure I've defined. So I can now put some ISBN. I'll put anything. It doesn't matter here. I can put a bar. So let's say, um, so I have some, a few users entered in this wiki. So let's say that someone called uh, Barack Obama wants to borrow JUnit in action. Uh, since he's been reelected, it might be useful. Who knows? And then the land date. So let's say today. And that's it. And it's a bit about technology. So here, we've created data. We've entered data in the wiki that are not uh, freeform data. They're structured data. And if I go back to the home of my application, I can now actually see the, uh, this entry. Uh, I can put another one. I'll just uh, put uh, Maven uh, Developer's Notebook. These are books I wrote in the past. And another ISBN, and so on. And the other, and so on. OK, let's go back. So now I have my two entries. And I have a table here that we call a live table, which can be filtered. So if I put AC, so I'll get only change in action. I can filter on all column live. And those, all those pages, all those entries are actually pages in the wiki. Uh, so that's, uh, that's, that's interesting. I've been able to create in a few, in a few minutes a uh, very simple application that's already useful, where you can enter structured data. Now my user can come in the wiki and use it. Now I can do one more thing, is I can share it. Because XWiki allows to install extension, and I can share my application as an extension so that others can install it. So I'm going to share it. I've installed a local repository here. Uh, so I'll share it with version 1.0. OK, done. It's shared. And now I can actually delete it. So I will delete completely this space. So removing everything, uh, sorry, not this here, delete. So this will remove, um, sorry, going back here. I made a mistake. OK, here. This del deletes the whole space. So this does two things. First, it's not listed anymore in the space list, and the application has disappeared because the application was hosted in that space. Now, I've shown you earlier on and the ability to install new application. If I go there now, and I actually can see some extension that exists already. There are 164 extensions listed here, and there is mine, because I've published it. It's now available for anyone who has uh, an XWIC install, can now install this application. So I can do it in one click, install, apply. If I had dependencies, this would have resolved the dependencies with the correct version. Uh, if it was not compatible with what I had, it would have said so, and so on. So I can install, I can upgrade, I can uninstall. So now it's done. If I go back to my home page, I see the my, my books application appears again here. Uh, it's also in the list of spaces. And I can uh, use it again. And here it goes. So let's go back to the slide. Here it goes. So let's go back to the slide, because we have five minutes more. So in a, in, in a few minutes, we've created a very simple application. And what's interesting is that with this concept, uh, we can have 
We can have multiple usages for a wiki, uh, much more various than uh, what you used to have with some simple wikis that where you can only enter uh, free from data. So you can, you can build some uh, blog, intranet, collaborative intranet, public websites, mashups, and so on, product management, meeting notes, and so on. It's the, the usages are huge. And actually, uh, it's interesting because, in my opinion, there is a long tail of application. And what this means is that there are a lot of applications out there. I mean, every day when you go to work, you have uh, some needs. I mean, you, you would have liked to have something that would be able to take some data here and there, combine them, uh, do some things with the data and republish it somewhere or use them for some, for some, some things. The problem is that you usually don't build those kind of ad hoc applications because uh, it's just too long. Like you would need to enter into development mode, have your tools, possibly create a team, uh, and so on. So there is, a, there is a use case, of course, for standard application. This is what you see in the red surface here. These are applications developed with a standard process, development process. And, uh, but they take a long time. And this is where XWiki's market is, or more generally the application wiki market, is this ad hoc ability uh, to create applications. And this yellow surface is actually very big because there is an infinite number of applications. So it's very interesting to be able to do that and to be able to do that for even for non-developers. As you've seen with this example, uh, non-developers are able also to create applications. Uh, of course, if they want to do more fancy things, you will need to get some developers to continue the application they have created, obviously. But it's already usable and, uh, and, uh, and brings some value. So what I, this is what I said that XWiki is the Excel of the web, because we've all used Excel to do any kind of thing with the macros, VBA macros in the past. Uh, but there was the problem that it was not online, not collaborative. And now you can create ad hoc applications very quickly in your wiki. So how do you get started? Uh, you download, you can download from xwiki.org. It's an open source project, LGPL. Uh, you can also register for a free account on xwiki cloud. It's a hosted xwiki um, at cloud.xwiki.com. And we even have a, a uh, farm on myxwiki.org, which is free for individual. It's actually our, a bit of our uh, live testing platform for the development team, because this is where we put the latest version of xwiki. And we use it for real, uh, for real, real life uh, testing. And you can have an, inst an instance there for, for yourself. Thank you very much. Uh, time is up. We have only one minute left, roughly. So if you have some questions, I'd be happy to, uh, to answer them. Thank you. Yep. There's one question there. Can I have a mic, a microphone? Oh, there is one. Not working. Yes, hello. Yeah. Okay. Is it possible to add a constraint or validation on fields? Like yes. A, yeah? what, what I've shown you here is actually with the wizard. But if you were to do it, uh, you don't have to do it with the wizard. And we have uh, what we call a, a class editor, where you actually have all the field types that you specify, and you can specify validation on them uh, with expressions. Uh, and even do more fancy things. So there are a lot of parameters. I've shown you the, uh, the very uh, simple ones for non-developers, but we have a mode for developers where there are a lot more of parameters. Nick, another question? Yeah? Do you have access right management? So the question is, do we have access right management? And yes, that's one of the, uh, the strengths of XWiki, is that it's very powerful in terms of management. You can have management at the, uh, at the farm level, because we are, we are multi-tenancy. So at the whole farm level, at the weak instance level, at the space level, or at the page level, uh, or programmatically in, a, in script inside the page also. There are all levels so, um, with groups and users and, and so on. Yep, another question. We have a few seconds left. Okay, thank you very much.